Welcome back everyone, I'm Keegs, and we are going to be continuing in part two of Batman Santa Claus Silent Night. So coming right off the back of issue one, we had Zatanna get sprayed with some gooey poison, and Santa decided to take her and just run off to try to save her. Though he didn't say anything, he left them a magical box. Batman picks it up and Damien yells, it could be a bomb! And Nightwing is just like, I know you never had holidays or anything fun really, but Santa actually leaves toys, not bombs, so uh, it's probably pretty safe that he's not trying to kill us here. Batman's like, it's not a toy though, it's actually a message, but there are too many bystanders here, so we're gonna listen when we're back at a secure area. Then we get a flash into what Krampus is dealing with right now, and he's watching the Bat family, and he's talking to these, like, ghost things that are around him, and basically they're feeding all these things into his ears and saying, like, oh, look, Klaus has help now, and you must move quickly, you have to free the rest of them. And it's kind of revealed here that Krampus is kind of doing all of this so that the voices and all these dead and captured people in his mind will leave him. The Bat family go back to one of Batman's safe houses though, and they open the toy box, and it reveals a bunch of images, and they're almost transported to the past. It shows how Klaus and Krampus used to play this good cop, bad cop. When all the kids were being naughty and acting up, they would send Krampus after them, and he would pretend that he was gonna eat them, and like, oh no, better watch out, because if you're naughty, Krampus is gonna come for you on Christmas. Then Santa would step in and be like, I know they were naughty, but let's let them go this one time. It's okay if he promises that he'll never be bad again. And of course, the kids are terrified of Krampus because he's a deranged looking monster. And they plead for their lives and say that they're never going to do anything bad again. We then flash forward generations later where Klaus and Krampus have kind of been doing this whole good cop, bad cop thing for decades now. And Krampus seems to be you know, getting a little bit more on edge because some people aren't as scared of him as they once were in the past for some reason. I don't know why the dude's freaking horrifying. I would be terrified if I had seen that dude, but maybe word got out that, oh, Krampus never actually goes through with it. So when Klaus tells Krampus to stop this time, Krampus doesn't actually stop and he decides to run off with the boy and Klaus has to go run and catch up with them. When he finally catches up with them, then Krampus acts like he actually ate the kid. Klaus is just kind of like in shock right now and he's like, I don't, I can't believe you just did that. And he immediately, without thinking, banished Krampus to the realms between space where all of the monsters are typically sent. Literally just moments after that though, they find the boy alive and well and Klaus immediately knows that he just fucked up. Klaus goes to the realm between space to look for Krampus, but it's a infinitely big place and he just can't find him no matter how hard he looks, and eventually he resigns himself to saying that Krampus is probably dead. Batgirl surmises that maybe since they just recently had the event Night Terrors and the Nightmare Realms kind of drew the waking world with the sleeping world really close and the veils were really thin or whatever, maybe Krampus was able to use that to escape and come back into the land of the mortal world. Klaus is like, ah, that's probably not good because seeing as we're from the Woden's lands, which are like ancient Nordic myth gods, we don't really die, so to speak, but centuries in a void of madness could really do a number on someone's head, especially someone like Krampus, who is a wild being and a force of nature and someone that was cut off from nature and doing the thing it craves most, which is just harmlessly scaring people. But he hasn't been able to do that in centuries. Still though, Klaus can't believe that Krampus has become a killer because he knew Krampus for centuries himself and he didn't really think that that was really in Krampus's nature to be a true villain. So maybe there's something else going on here still. Batman says that he has friends that can handle the drog, but please keep helping Zatanna to Klaus, and he kind of fades away from the memory. Twelve hours later in Bloodhaven, a flock of Draug are sleeping as twilight sets, when one of them comes screaming in. But when that person gets a little closer, all the Draug are like, I, that, I don't think that's actually one of us, even though it does appear to look a lot like us. And that Draug ends up throwing some canister at them, which is full of light and causes them to all flee from under the bridge, when then it's revealed that it's actually Miss Martian that was in disguise to look like one of them. She says that they've got their full attention and she leads them away. 
They start to catch up to Miss Martian, but then two of them get hit in the heart with an arrow, and it's revealed that Green Arrow and Black Canary have come to her aid. Oliver looks up to the sky and sees, like, a hundred of those things, and he's like, uh, I feel like Batman may have undersold just how many of these there would be, because uh, I'm not sure I've brought quite enough arrows to take all of these guys down. But Black Canary and Green Arrow kind of do their thing and are able to take down a lot of them, until we cut over to the Moors of Scotland where Krampus is able to open a portal to some monsters that they trapped there centuries ago, and it's revealed to be a bunch of ice giants, angels, things that just look really creepy, and a bunch of warriors that I probably wouldn't want to fight. Just as Green Arrow and Black Canary are being overrun, the Bat Family shows up to help a lot, when all of a sudden they see a red streak come through the sky and Batman's like, oh, that ain't Santa. And Superman just crashes down onto the ground, leaving a huge crater. And he's got like his laser vision eyes out. And he's like, you never said that you knew Santa? And then his eyes go blue and you're like, oh my God, that's such a wholesome moment for Clark Kent. And I love to see him like that because of course Clark would not only believe in Santa, but also be like a total fanboy over him. That is going to wrap it up for issue number two though. So stick around because the next issue, Superman actually is going to meet the man, the myth, the legend himself, Santa Claus. I'm Keegs and I will catch you all next time for some more Santa Claus content.